Yeah, let's count down. Five. What's up, everybody? Mr. Lama C here. This is going to be a little bit of Inside the Minds of Masters. I used to do this before with StarCraft, where I'd take a look into the minds of Stefano and various uh, professional StarCraft players. Today, we're going to take a look into my own mind for Diablo 2. I feel like, hopefully, at this point, I can say I'm a master of the game, uh, in some sense, at least. Uh, so this is going to be a speed run through the game. Um, I'll slow it down a little bit sometimes to talk, so it'll be like a half speed run, half talk, whatever. Um, but I'm going to be talking this entire run. I'm going to be just spitting out every single thought that I have um, over maps, characters, items, um, nipples, ev all sorts of, not nipples, sorry, no nipple stream. All sorts of things. It's going to be a great, great run, uh, hopefully. And hopefully you guys will learn some things. Hopefully you guys, if anybody's trying to speed run this game, will gain an understanding of um, why I go, I do certain things. Um, I'm going to go out of my way to get a few things like uh, maybe extra resistances, extra defense, whatever it is. Um, I might go out of my way to get a couple things here just so I can talk about them more. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start with an assassin because I think assassin will be good here. I'm going to run it through normal. If this goes well, maybe I'll do like a nightmare piece of it, a hell piece of it, so I can showcase my mind um, in each section of the game, each difficulty, and everything like that. So, this is going to be a quiet stream. It's going to be me talking. I'm not going to be engaging with chat. Chat! Okay! Stop it! Okay. Yeah! Um, so, I'm not going to be engaging with chat. I'm not going to be engaging um, with all the subs and donations and everything like that. I might throw a little like heart up or something. I appreciate anybody who donates or subs today, um, but it's just gonna be quiet. It's gonna be quiet so I can focus on just doing this, saying this, blah blah blah. Um, so, nah, chat. You can do what you want. You guys, you guys have fun over there. Anyways, anyways. Um, I won't look at you. Gosh dang it! All right, we're gonna get started. Five, four, three, two. Okay, so I'm running the assassin here. So first thing, of course, is I want to be dropping my buckler um, because blocking is actually going to take more frames than just getting hit. This is because if you get hit and the monster does less than 15% of your life pool, which none of these monsters out here in the Blood Moor can do 15% of my life pool in one shot, then it won't actually put me into faster hit recovery. So there's two things. There's faster block and faster hit. Um... And so faster blo or blocking would be when I get hit, I'm going to actually block it. Uh, as opposed to if I get hit and more than 15% of my life pool is taken, then I go into faster hit recovery, and that's where the skill faster hit recovery comes into play. So right now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a split in the road. I have found the split in the road. I know because of the split in the road that this is going to be my Den of Evil to the right here, right? So if I wanted to do the Den of Evil, I could just drop a TP right now. And this would be why I wouldn't have to run all the way over to the right and drop that TP there. Instead, it will just be faster. Is it 12? It might be 12 instead of 15. It might be 12, sorry. Um, regardless, I know that in the early game, no monster's doing 12% of my life pool either. So this is something why I think going forward, a lot of times vitality can be very important, right? So that guy just hit me and did two damage. So that's why I didn't take that damage. So I'm just gonna keep following the path. I know that this is gonna exit down to the bottom left. You can know where your exit's gonna be pretty much as soon as you leave um, the town. And so that's why I'm just kind of knowing that, right? And running this way and following the path, and obviously. Um, it is 12. All right, thank you, Warren. So, um, so right now I'm looking to just get level 2 and then get some items and see uh, whatever I can do with this. So a big thing is I just want to get to that fire trap. All right, we got a ring. That's really good. Um, if I can find mana or stamina potions along the way, that's always great. I don't always go back here. Sometimes I choose to just stay out there. Because I found this ring, I'm just going to go ahead and go back and sell everything. Because uh, I have enough mana that I can just go ahead and fill up on potions. So I'm not going to be too worried about having to come back to town in the future. Right, so I can just get all my stamina, get all my mana potions. You might say, why aren't you getting health potions? Uh, hopefully I shouldn't need them. Um, I'm going to have my fire trap here really soon. So I should be fine. A lot of times you want to get level 2 by cold planes so you can deal with these minion groups like this, right? I just got a boss group. But I'm just going to get that right here really quick before I fight this minion group. That way I can kind of drag them all together. And there's mana burn, so I'll just have to be careful a little bit. Whenever I see a boss group, I'm always going to hover over it at first. Just to kind of check what it is. Because um, that's always just like a smart thing to do. Always a smart thing to do. 
So here I'm in the cold plains, I'm going to be looking for some sort of specific exit, and on the way I'm just going to be killing mobs of groups. If I see something group up, there we go, I can kill four at a time or something, I'm going to go ahead and kill that. Um, if it's like one, two monsters, usually not quite as much. But I'll sometimes kill those those groups together. I'm level three, uh, and boom, we found Stony Field right there. That's really easy. So the reason I know that Stony Field, of course, is it's not in the corner, right? We have this little piece. You have to think of this map like a rectangle. We have this little piece. This is more towards the center of the map. So if this was running towards, like, up here, towards that corner, I would have turned around and not gone in it. But we ended up getting lucky um, and got a really good cold plains to stony map. So that just kind of happens. Uh, it's just kind of something that you figure out along the way. So once again, there's a boss group. Whenever you see groups of monsters like that, um, that's where you kind of want to, to go. So I'm going to run in kind of this circle here, one, to dodge some arrows. But additionally, it helped to group them up. You saw how they were kind of spread out there. Um, it's very important to, as an assassin, to try and really group monsters together because I'm trying to fire trap them, right? Uh, so now I want to look for Rakanishu. Stones are always off the path in some way. So we'll go ahead and just keep getting life, because once again, the higher my life, the harder it is for something to stun me or put me into faster recovery. So that's why I run kind of back and forth zigzag across the map a lot of times, is because I'm just looking to get that um, grouping there. I'm just looking to see, okay, it's somewhere off this path. I know that much. And then once again, I'm going to run a little bit past these guys to kind of group everyone up. Um, so I can get a better kill on them all. So that's pretty good. I feel pretty good about everything I've killed there. You'll notice, once again, that I'm really focusing on boss groups. That's always important. So now I've got my level 4. What I do immediately is I go to Shadow Disciplines right now for my next skill setup. That way I don't just completely screw it up. And once again, there's a big boss group, so we'll just go ahead and deal with that. Uh, constantly drinking staminas and manas kind of along the way. If I'm if I'm already in my inventory, I'll sometimes just drink a stamina because why not? Um, other times I'll wait till I'm really low. So we have a cursed tainted group. This is always a dangerous group, so you want to keep your distance kind of just enough so that they're not going to be firing that often and they'll just be chasing more. Um, can be a little bit hard to group them sometimes, but as you can see, we got a pretty good grouping right there, and we did get hit, but that's okay. That's okay. So I want to try and stick to the right of this map, right? So this right here, the, the right right here is going to lead me to a dead end. I know that because there's these red guys. These red guys are almost always indicative of a corner. Uh, sometimes you can run through them, but they often will lead you just to this dead end um, spacing. So the reason that I go level 4 right there is, of course, for uh, getting this next little upgrade here. And we'll go ahead and drink a little potion, whatever. So nothing nothing that's attacking me right now is too dangerous. A lot of times people are always like, why are you on such low life? You're always scaring me. Um, nothing that was around there could kill me in that moment. It was going to take a lot of shots uh, to kill me. So it didn't really matter as much to have my life super high. Um, you can, of course, drink that potion a little bit faster if you, if you want. Uh, but I'm just going to stick to this right edge wall, essentially. And there we go. We find our exit because it's pretty much... More often than not, going to be on that right edge wall going up. Sometimes you have to make a couple decisions. Uh, in that in that case, we didn't. We just got to stick to the edge. Um, but, you know, it's all about... It's more to the right side, and then level 2 is more to that left side. So we found a boss group. Once again, bring them all together. So we can just get a couple really good shots. And take out, you know, most of them right there. Without having to worry too much about... Firing, killing one, moving, firing, killing another. Um, oh, I still have a guitar on. I should have switched over to a dagger. So there's little things like that that uh, I know I found a dagger somewhere. Oh, well. There's little things like that that you just always want to kind of like be aware of um, and everything of, of that nature. Okay, so we have Black Marsh, and I'm going to, of course, be finding this waypoint. Um, important things for this character. Tal, Eth, Tir, Ral, right? Those are the runes that I'm going to be looking for. Uh, always check shrines. Those are just super important to check. One, of course, you can find an experience shrine or something like a skill shrine, which is always great. But additionally, you want to check it and see, is it going to be near a waypoint so I can um, abuse it in the future? Or take advantage, not really abuse. Um, take advantage of the fact that I have shrines there. So I've got three shrines. I would love a waypoint, like, right here. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to find it. So I'm going to be going and looking around. I don't want to go. I know that the, like this is my max edge right here, right? You have to think of every map as a giant rectangle that has cutouts and cut-ins. 
So once again, that line matches up right with that line, right? And we're going to be approaching this bottom corner here soon. So it'll just be like that, and then it just has it just has little cuts all over the place. So that's why a lot of times I'm exploring kind of right in the, the center line of a lot of maps. And you'll also notice that I ran away from the path at first. Uh, that's so I, that's because like, here's another cutout. Um, so I know that, right, that's just going to cut and go down like right there and there's going to be nothing over there. But you want to avoid paths because of course the tower and uh, the waypoint can't be on a path directly, right? They're going to have to have like a little bit of to the side. So a lot of times there's more area, more space um, where there's not. So that's kind of gross. So it looks like we have kind of a gross map. Uh, we'll see where this waypoint actually ends up being. It might just be a little bit north. I'm guessing either north over here or all the way up to the top. Um, and then to the right here. You kind of have to think about where the path is going to be. So I know that this path, I know that this is going to be my exit out of the Black Marsh, right? I, it had to have been there because it wasn't any other way. So that only leaves room really around like right here. So yeah, it's up, it's up right there. So that's kind of where I expect it to be. Um, after seeing that map a little bit. So we'll head over to Black Marsh. Go ahead and move down here and go in the tower. And we're just going to start doing some runs. Um, so once again, big things to do. First thing is you want to kind of check the group that you're fighting. Especially more important for rangers. Or archers, I should say. Um, always check always check the archer group. Obviously, curse here wouldn't be ideal. But curse on those guys isn't as bad. Because your goal, of course, with the assassin is to not get hit. Alright, well we have teleport. Don't have to check that one. That makes it a lot easier. So now I just want to bring over her friends to uh, to kind of group them up. There you go. So see how easy that was to uh, to get them all back together, standing next to each other. That right there is a huge time saver, and you can just do that over and over again, right? That's just like always something that you can do. Oops, give me that. Um, over and over is just try and find a way to group them and not every single room can group them the best um but that's okay so we have really good so far amazing uh like level one and two we have great bosses that are right near the entrance this boss group's not the best the ghost um they don't give the most experience but they're not bad for her because she uh she deals damage right just kind of like stacked the way she deals her damage she's not trying to like melee them or anything like that it's stacked damage on top that the fire traps hit everything so it's pretty good. So I'm just going to be keep running to the left of the way that I come in. Um, hopefully you guys know my map sense, right? So this way I need to go to the bottom left. Right here should be my exit. There you go. Um, I might go keep looking for another boss group here, just really quickly. And... Okay, there we go. So we found a boss group in here. There's supposed to be a boss group on every level. It's not always 100%. I don't know the actual percentage of time that there actually is a boss group. It's probably like 90% um, percent of the time there's a boss group on a level. So really quickly, I'm just checking, like, poking into these areas to see if there's bosses over there. Because um, once again, this can be good. A lot of times your bosses will be in the same spot that they were prior. Right? So bosses kind of repeat their location. So, it's it's not 100% of the time that that happens, and here we actually have this boss group over here. With spectral hits, so we'll have to be a little bit careful. I'm actually going to drag out. So, the Countess won't leave this room. Whatever room she spawns in, she'll never leave that room. Um, and so, I'm just going to be pulling out so I can deal with some archers here first. If I had strangling gas potions, I would probably run around in there, but I don't. So... We're just going to deal with her out here. There we go. So get him grouped up. And hopefully get the kill. Here. And maybe get some strangling gas potions. Nice. Alright, we'll see. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kill all of her minions first. Because she's fire immune, I don't have strangling gas potions. It kind of stinks. Um, so I'm going to instead use the fact that I have claw mastery. And abuse that, right? So you always want to kind of be refreshing your... Um, versus speed but yeah so i have claw mastery so that's also why i keep this guitar and i don't just immediately throw it out because if i don't find strangling gas potions along the way either i reset or i sit there and use that and she'll actually drop some for us that's good so we'll go ahead and refresh our potions just a little bit um i do have tal and was that an ethrin as well l okay so i have tal tal i'm gonna keep one of those towels and the other one uh we'll sell that go ahead and put that puppy on for now not a big deal 
Grab some of these, a couple of these things, and we'll just fill up on some potions. Okay. Refresh our burst of speed. Probably should have done that right when I started. And we have that one shrine there. And I'm actually going to go over here and check these shrines. They're close enough that it's worth it, in my opinion. Okay. Looks like we don't get that. We'll, we'll go, we got the burst of speed, so I'm going to go ahead and use burst of speed again, because that's going to increase my skill by two, right? So now my burst of speed is four, level four instead of level two. So, of course, I'll get to run faster. That's always a nice benefit. Um, I'm just going to keep pumping vitality right now. Assassin, you're only going to pump vitality, basically. Uh, if you wanted to change it a little bit, you could. But vitality is your main, your main winner right there. And then you'll get your strength whenever you want to move up to that next level of a belt. So we'll kill that guy and just move on. And it's really nice that we have this. And, okay, so we have a fire enchant right there. So you can see how I was dodging arrows as I was trying to figure out what the heck that guy was, right? That's always really important because if he's a cursed or extra strong or cold enchant or something like that, you can have a not-so-fun day. So I'm going to check for a monster really quickly on this level. Mm, I don't see one. I'm just going to turn around. I'm just going to turn around. Sometimes it's right there. Uh, so some it looks like sometimes that we run this map, we'll get it. Sometimes we won't. Um, we'll just have to see. And once again, I'll do the similar over here. Kind of check for a monster. Pack. Doesn't look like we got the pack this time either. That kind of stinks. That kind of stinks. And, oh, here it is. Okay. So on this level, I don't think I'm going to run to the right anymore. Because we've seen a boss group right at the start. I've seen a boss group over there. So that feels pretty fine to me. We've got our Stringling Gas Potions, by the way, now, so this will be really good. If we run into a pack, um, first thing I can do is just drop that down. That's going to do a lot of damage and uh, and be very helpful in the killing, and then I can just kind of do finishing blows, finishing touches with everything right there. So we'll grab that Eagle Orb. Always good money. I'm always looking for stuff worth money. Um, it's not as much of an issue on the Assassin when you're starting out, but it can be good to note. And there is this group, so it looks like we're going to have archers that'll be in a couple places, either inside or just on the outskirts here. Um, get some health pots, chug those puppies, and we'll just fill up really quick again. So now, of course, um, strangling gas potions are going to be important. And you'll notice that I'm weapon swapping back and forth, right? I drop this, and I guess I don't need the weapon swap right now, but when I have a dagger, it can be very important to weapon swap. Um, between the two of them. So I need to actually go get a dagger after this. Let me get this one and these things. One, me. Oh my gosh. Go. So I'm going to go get my dagger now. And while I'm here, I'll also go look for some potions or some whatevers. Uh, and I can sell this as well and buy it back. So let's just get whatever dagger it is that we want. I don't even care anymore. That'll be fine. Sell you. Sure, sell you, sell you, sell you. We have our ta three towels and a rowel. Okay, that's fine. Um, and really quick, check for armor. Got that. Okay. And anything, some light reds on these gloves. And that's all I'm really caring about. Oh, I have a belt already. Okay. Uh, so a lot of times I'll just buy a random belt because random belt can be helpful. Um, beyond that, I'm going to be... There we go, check for shines. Um, Always use the new burst of speed as soon as you get it because it's increased fast for unlock. So that's always a benefit. Another skill shrine. So once again, I'll recast my burst of speed again to get even more. And go ahead and get a free kill on that girl because why not? It's fun. Um, okay, we got a boss group on the way. So this is always helpful. Whenever you have kind of a longer run like this, getting a boss group on the way can be kind of your saving grace. Assuming that you need the runes or you need the experience more, right? It all kind of depends. Um, I'll go ahead and get that level 5, or that 5 extra in strength, uh, so that I can get 25 strength so I can wear a 3 socket belt later. So now first thing I do, of course, is like I said, I'm going to drop that. You also want to check for cold enchanted. That's really one of the most important things to check for when you're um, fighting a boss. Is checking for that cold enchanted so that way you can know, okay, how do I have to deal with this? And I left one of the archers there, that's fine. You just say, okay, who cares? Keep pumping it because we've got more bursts of speed. We got that good spawn this time. Um, but yeah, cold, cold chances so you can avoid the frost nova that's going to be at the end. Or if it's a ranged monster so you can avoid that. So like I said, I'm just going to keep checking to the left here. Looks like there's no boss on the left. Oh well. Sometimes you get the boss there, sometimes you don't. 
boss isn't right there. Keep going a little bit more. I think we had boss here last time. Okay, so boss is going to be right here again. Uh, so like I said, these spawns are, are often quite the same. And right there, I got really lucky that gold, that frost nova hit that pillar and didn't hit me. That would have been my fault for not checking boss. That, this is what happens when you don't check the bus. We have a minion group down here. Mana burn, not a big deal. Gonna keep moving. Um, at this point, I'm starting to turn into really the speed run piece of this, right? Everything's more focused around that speed. Not that it wasn't before, um, but I can really start to move my way through here. So getting level 12, super helpful. Tier Ith, nice. Good drop so far. I just need that Eth rune, and I should be good to go. We have our tier Ral. Yeah, okay. Cast this. Uh, we'll get a couple more potions. So we'll just potion up. That'll work for me. Okay. Um, check for that experience shrine. Skill shrine. <laughs> Lots of skill shrines. No experience shrines. But yeah, level 12 gets you that fire trap, which is so helpful. If you can just run and drop fire traps, it's just going to improve your, your abilities so much. So right here, whenever I get a boss group of those guys at like this level, it's just, I don't know, I don't feel like killing the entire boss group. You have to remember the way that boss groups and experience work is the boss and all of his minions give 500% experience. Um, so if I'm killing all of his minions, I'm getting 500% experience for each one of them. And having to make sure I focus down the boss and just the boss is kind of whatever, right? It's like, I don't really need to do that. All right, teleport. Dropping a couple uh, gas potions there so I could have a better spread. And you tr a good note is that when you start to go up in levels and experience and life, I guess the big thing is life when things aren't going to stun you as much. Um, a big thing is being able to hold your ground so that you're not having to constantly move. Right? So I'm going to try and hold my ground and just put them into faster hit recovery instead. So you can either go in faster hit recovery or they can. So if you do 12% of their damage... Um, they'll go into faster recovery if they do the same to you than you will So you can kind of know when something's like getting close and it's gonna start hitting you too much And that's where you just kind of back off and try and fire rapid fire as much as you can You don't want to go fire once move fire once move, right? That's kind of reserved for if I have to then I'll do it like that um, The reason that I did end up looking in here I almost turned around but then I turned back to look in here was because I saw that light. You can see a slight light at the end of the other side of the wall. And that's what I'm looking for when I'm looking for a boss group right there. Spectral hit here guy can chill me for a tiny bit. But he doesn't chill for that long. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. And we'll just go ahead and do this. Get our burst to speed up again. I'm already at level 5 burst to speed. Okay. Yeah. So that's the, last, that's the last bit I want in my burst of speed. I'm going to launch a couple. Uh, these guys are going to block the door. It's really annoying. There we go. Got in. So here's where you'll note, right? You see me drop that. Weapon swap back. Weapon swap, drop gas. Weapon swap to dagger. Um, I'm doing this just back and forth, back and forth. So that way I can just keep weapon swapping. Um, and that's very helpful for... Uh, man, no experience. No experience at all. I can keep weapon swapping, so that way I'm always attacking with the fastest attack rate. So having that dagger is going to increase my attack speed, right? That's going to uh, make my attack speed for my casting of traps just faster overall. And here you'll note that we have this boss group again. Not always going to spawn. Remember how it's like boss groups like to spawn in the same spots? Um, it doesn't always happen. And I don't know the exact chance of it happening or whatever it is. Um, but boss monsters simply like to... Uh, hop into the same exact spot if they can. So here, once again, right? We've seen this boss group like three out of four of the runs or four out of five of the runs. They've been standing in this same spot right here. So we'll drop one more poison gas potion there. That group seems to be kind of strong. Okay, she's multi-shot. You can tell pretty quickly if there's like a lot of extra damage happening there because it's, oh, okay, you know, she's, <laughs> I'm getting hit for a lot of damage. So we'll move on, and there's one of the minions, and like I said, it's not really important if there's just one minion there always, right? If you really need the experience, you can sometimes go for it, but, and there's that light on the other side of the door, right, that you can kind of tell and say, okay, I should go there. That guy's fire enchanted. I'm fire, so I don't care. I'm just not going to do anything with that. That's pretty pointless to me. Uh, want to make sure I stay out of the holy freeze or a range. So I just want to keep her at a certain distance right here. This should be fine. There we go. 
Um, and then one thing also to note with archers is if you need to, uh, the best way to like deal with archers is to, if they're ever too close that they're shooting arrows, just back up a little bit. Um, back up to like the other side of the screen and then start shooting where you want them to be, right? So if they're right here and I'm standing right here and they're shooting, I, I'll go right here and then start fire blasting right like in this area. All the archers will move into the range to where they can start hitting you. And then you can have them grouped up. And additionally, you can start to catch them in your own, in their faster hit recovery instead of them catching you. So it's a great way to kind of uh, deal with archers without having to, one, you're not getting hit, two, you're hitting them. Um, very, very helpful. So I'm keeping a note on how many potions I have over there on the right side. I should have like four left at this point, so it's not too bad. Man, I still don't have a Ethrune. Brutal. A lot of runes, but no Eths. Um, so I do have another Ral just from the three Tals. So then I... Oh, I do have an Eth rune. Okay. I will move on then. Those tier runes aren't going to do me any good. I'll take some Fire Reds. Fire Reds is one of the most important things that I can think of to start the game with. And 8 Life Small Charm seems really good for right now. Any sort of Life Small Charms like that can be really nice. Uh, at this point, I'm going to chug a few stamina potions. Not everybody likes to do this, and especially on the Assassin. She has such good stamina, that's really not too big of a deal. But I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, so I'll do that. I'll grab a couple health pots, a couple of mana pots, and I'm ready to move on. So I've got Talith, Tear Ral, all the runes that I need. Um, I'm level 11. That's pretty decent for moving on. And we got another boss group here, which is nice. So I don't actually need to replenish these gas potions. They can... I could have replenished those gas potions if I was doing one more run. Because I'm not doing one more run, though. It's like, eh, why? I'm going to use them for this boss group and then for one more boss group. And that's all that I'll be using gas potions for. Because as soon as I get fire trap, um, I'm really not going to care about them. And sort of any sort of fire enchanted monster, I'm not going to care about either, right? So at this point, these guys like to group up kind of on their chase. It's always to the up in the Tamo Highland. Tamo? Tamo? However you want to call it. It's always going to be on this up route. So I'm always just going to run up. Notice I'm not really stopping to kill a lot of things. Nothing was grouped up super well. I didn't get a good group of monsters chasing me either. Um, you know, there's four. I'd rather have like 12 monsters chasing me or something and then deal with them that way. So, doesn't look like it. This right here is one of three layouts. There's only three layouts in the outer cloister. And each one has a different waypoint position. It tells you which one to run. If it's on the far right, you run to the left. If it's on this bottom left, you run to the right. And if it's there's a cross in the middle, you run straight forward. So those are just the three layouts, super easy to memorize. Um, that should be like one of the first layouts I would recommend anybody memorizes for, you know, just a quick show off to your friends. Hey, I know how to run a basic map. You can be like, yeah, you know, maps are, there's only three set maps here, so it's not too difficult. You can kind of do a little show off stuff, whatever. So once again, just trying to avoid getting put in faster recovery. I've got these uh, archers hitting me, which is kind of annoying, but it looks like they're not doing enough damage. And I'll just grab that right there, so now they actually won't do the damage that is necessary to hit me. So, in this level, I'm going to be in the barracks, either off to the left. This is either going to be, um, the whatever dude, bad guy, Smith, or it's going to be the exit. And you'll just tell when you get there, it looks like it's Smith. Uh, so we'll just grab our malice. So this means that the exit is going to be facing towards the top left. That's what it always means. When you come in, it's either to the left or forward, that's one of the two. And it could be like all the way over there and then up. That's fine. Remember how kind of map rules work. And this should be good. I should be able to get my, uh, whatever you call it pretty soon, fire traps. So I'm happy that we're getting experience here. Go ahead and grab some potions. Why not? Perfect. And just try and get out of there. So we're almost level 12. That's going to be super helpful. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to keep running backwards until we get to this point where we're going to run to our current left. And there's always, always a boss group down in this corner of this map. Whenever you see a map that looks like this, there's a boss group. When I say always, it fits the always rules of like 90 plus percent of the time. <laughs> always is never 100% definite for, um, for like monster spawns. But there you go. There's that right there. Simple. Nice and easy. So I'll just keep pumping uh, that. And now that I have level 12, I can actually switch into fire trapping on my main skill. I'm going to be looking to move straight across from the way that I come in on jail level 1. So you'll see me just kind of go in the, almost the most straight across path that I can. Um, there's also a waypoint off to the left. So that's kind of a huge thing that I'm looking for. And I'll do a little bit of extra shots at this guy. And then let my fire traps finish him off. 
Perfect. And one thing that you will note is you'll start running out of mana. A little bit with fire traps. Um, so level 1 fire trap can be a little bit annoying, actually, because it just burns through your mana so quickly. If you want to get some energy or something to deal with it, that's not bad. Um, possessed, I'm not always going to focus on killing a lot of times because possessed have, uh, what is it? They have like 400, 400 or 500 percent the health of a normal. I think it's like 400 percent. It might be 200 percent. 200 or 400 percent health, essentially. So they just have way more health than all of their counterparts. So they take a long time to kill. Um, level 2, we are always going to have that whatever boss group off to the left pit spawn foul dog is going to be over here i'll go over here and show him to you guys he's always going to be a cold enchanted cursed tainted group um i don't really mind on the assassin dealing with cold enchanted tainted groups that's totally fine if it was like a sorceress i'd avoid it at all cost but it's good to note that that's off to the left so once again i want to run straight forward straight across and that's going to be a dead end right there so it looks like our exit will be right here and the reason it's going to be right there most likely is because it has to be straight across and you can see that little indent right there and that's going to tell you that it's going to lead you to the stairs right this is how it looks when you're entering it from the uh top to that bottom way so a couple dudes right here see if i can kind of stick around to kill them they're gonna die and uh, that'll work and now i'm gonna run off to the left side so this is level three Entrance is going to be on the left, so I'm just going to run as far left as I can, and boom, there's our exit to the inner cloister. It makes it nice and easy so that I can get there. Very simple. I'll grab this waypoint just in case. Uh, I'm doing okay on potions. I'm running a little bit low on mana potions, um, which is, you know, usually the case. If you're going to run out of anything, it's going to usually be mana potions down here. So, oh, he's fire enchanted. So I'm not going to worry about killing him. I'm just going to go ahead and kill all of his minions, because minions are still worth the experience. Even if you can't kill the boss, killing the minions can be very good. Uh, this looks like a dead end. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's dead ended. And here are catacombs. I'm just going to be looking for that exit. Here's corners. A lot of times there's a boss group in here. And you can especially tell with the lights. Uh, if there's one, you say, hello, is someone home? If the lights are on, someone's home. Pretty simple. Uh, I can go back get some get some more potions because I'm running out and this is going to possibly save me from a trip back home by the end. Um, so we'll keep going up here. There's bosses in here as well. Looks like we have some tainted. Not my favorite, some tainted champions, but whatever. Uh, that's a dead end, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cross through here. That'll be easier because I can also pick up the mana potions that they drop along the way. And that is going to dead end. Okay, so. Just straight dead ends all the way across. And this is how you fourth way at Catacombs. So I'll make sure to teach you all about that. Always be checking to make sure that your burst of speed is up. It's something you'll notice comes down a lot. Um, you just have to kind of be aware of it. We have a boss group right there. You can tell by the lighting a lot of times if it's a boss group and coloring and things of that nature. And there we go is our exit. That's good. I uh, don't really care about getting cursed right there unless I like step down into a terrible area. So I'm going to drop a t tome of TP. And then I'm going to immediately start running this in a clockwise direction. Reason being is that the waypoint is usually going to be, or it's going to be left of it, right? Uh, left of the exit. Waypoint will be left of the exit, or exit will be right of the waypoint. This is a great boss group, by the way, for experience. So much experience. Um, though there can be a little bit difficult to kill. So I'm going to be running in that manner. But if I do run into, uh, is that, yeah, it's dead end. If I do run into the waypoint, I can immediately take it to my town portal, and that'll help get me started on the next foot a little bit faster, right? So it's kind of like a just-in-case. So I'll do it during hardcore runs as well. A lot of people are like, why are you doing that during a hardcore run? So at this point, I've explored enough that I'm going to assume I'm going to run into the exit first before I run into the waypoint. Not always a guarantee. Um, but it does feel like that's what's going to happen. Here we go. So there's this. And then that means the waypoint would be like over here or up here or something like that, right? So level three is, <clears throat> once again, just going to be like level one. Same idea. Uh, these guys can sometimes be really annoying to try and kill. They like to sit there and dodge as much as possible. And they'll start running away at low health. So you want to make sure you can get them like into a corner. That's your best bet. If you can put them in a corner, um, that's going to be the fastest way to kill them. And trying to look around at this map and see if I see anything that's going to guide me where I need to go. That's it right there. So you can tell by the way that that map is, that right there is an exit. It's going to have that same door on the other side. And this is going to be where the door is. This is always, if you see this map, like that little piece that looks like that, that's how you know you're going to have the exit to the fourth way. Or whatever level you're going down to. 
So having these t tainteds here, right, can be a little bit annoying, but I'm actually a little bit happy because they might drop some... No, they dropped all healing potions. <laughs> all healings, one mana. I was going to say they might drop some uh, mana potions to make this a little nicer for me. But it's okay. I am an assassin. So drop two traps and then attack. Two traps and then attack, right? That's going to be your base way for killing most everything with fire traps on the assassin. The reason is because of something called next delay. And we'll go ahead and drink up all of our potions and stuff and get rid of items that aren't worth as much for items that can be worth more. And let me put that there. Uh, so the way next to delay works is if a specific skill hits a boss, it will, it will put them invincible to that skill or next delay skills, whatever, for however many frames it is set for. And I don't have the exact frame number um, for this character. But it will put that character invincible, look for faster run walk, don't see it. Uh, for a specific amount of time. So I like to run one and one, or one and three on this character. And then I have three stamina potions, so I feel pretty good, pretty good on those. Um, so yeah, so whenever Fire Trap hits, it puts, it puts the monster in a sp space where it's immune uh, to getting hit again from that for a little bit of time. So the reason then, of course, is, or that's why we drop two fire traps, because if you hit with more than two fire traps, they're just going to, the waves will just start running through the monsters often. Um, and it's not going to be doing any damage, especially if they're hitting, like, same time and stuff like that. So you want kind of staggered fire traps that are hitting with slight intervals, um, and that's going to be the best way to do the most damage. And so you'll see I kind of drop two, and then I drop a third one, fourth one, kind of a little bit further away. This guy has fire chant. I might just let him chase me and kill him as I run. Uh, it's not worth standing to kill one monster. That's pretty much almost never worth it. Sometimes you'll see me drop like this. That's because there's like nine monsters here. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, so once again, go back to what I was talking about in Act 1, thinking about things as a square. You have to think about things as a square again in Act 2. Be very square-minded, rectangle-minded. Don't think out of the box. It is a box. Think like that, right? So everything in this game, uh, in this regard, is a box that then just has some stuff removed from it. So this is a chunk taken out of what is a perfect box. This is a rectangle. What we are in is a rectangle. And this is every Act 2 map like this. It's just going to be this rectangular shape. Um... It just has pieces taken out. That piece is taken out. That piece is taken out. But ultimately, it is just a rectangle. So a rectangle with often uh, something in the middle of it like this. So you want to kind of run around in this center line right here. And I'm just going to be looking for, um, looking for kind of edges that are a perfect square. Because whenever you have a perfectly squared off edge, that's where an exit is. If you have that chunk taken out of it, that's so you know an exit's not there. So I know that this is the exit because I have a perfectly squared edge. Right? Simple as that. Um, I'll go ahead and run this way. So I'm going to do the run forward, jump back strats. This right here is a little bit riskier because now I'm saying I'm going to find the Maggot Lair waypoint, no matter what. Or Lost City waypoint if I want to be like extra run forward, no backs. We have Beetles. Beetles are really good. I'm very happy about that. We also have another boss group right here. Um, you'll notice that I haven't really said anything about gear too much. Right now, I don't really care too much about the gear. Uh, Grand Scepter can be worth some dough. It can have plus skills on it. That's good. So I won't be looking for torches. Torches are indicative of a waypoint. Um, so this right here is kind of all dead end. It could be right in that tiny slot. There's like the tiniest slot that I did not check over in that corner. I'm just going to have to kind of risk it. I also know that there's going to be a ladder somewhere on that wall. So I just have to make sure that I go watch back for that. I'm going to recast my uh, burst of speed, head over here. Nothing up there in that corner exactly. It looks like maybe we'll run into an exit over here. Um, yep, we will. So there's the Lost City exit. Once again, I have found a rounded, or I found a corner that has the full corner fledge. Like, whatever. Full fledged corner there. So I know that there's an exit. And here's a chunk taken out, but it's not on the corner, right? It's prior to the corner. Uh, so this means that we're going to have the three and one. This means three areas will be on the top. One area is going to be down in that bottom. So I'm going to kind of check around the top here. Hopefully get a waypoint kind of close. Um, there's Beetle Burst. want to make sure I stop for Beetle Burst. He is worth a good amount of experience. Beetles are worth a lot of experience, which is why I was like, hooray, we found Beetles. Um, always a good thing to do. 
And so we found beetles, and now I'm just looking for uh, this waypoint and this maggot lair. And hopefully they are close enough together that I'm not doing this long, drawn-out, horrible run. So dropping fire traps in different manners. Um, you have to also think about the way that your fire trap is going to first shoot off, right? It's going to try and shoot at that closest monster. So sometimes you drop a couple here and then like one over here. That one can go there. This one can handle these guys. Uh, and so you have to be very kind of strategic in your placement of your traps. It's not just throw them everywhere. So this is good enough. It means we're going to have the maggot lair somewhere near where I am right there. Um, I'll grab a couple more potions. And I'm also going to stop and look for some faster runwalk boots really quickly. This is something that I think is uh, very important to do and something that we don't always do quite often enough because a lot of times they do sell them. Um, and nothing I really care about. I was also looking for resistances. Faster hit recovery, resistances, faster runwalk. Those are kind of the things that I'm really looking for on the assassin right now. Things I don't care at all about. Uh, defense. I, I just don't care. Defense is purely used in a if a monster will hit you or not. And you know what? My defense is 32. Monsters are going to hit me a lot. That's kind of fine. Um, or monsters won't hit me a lot because the focus of this build is not getting hit. It's staying away. I love how I got hit as I said that. Um, so now I'm kind of looking for... Yeah, okay. Uh, might just be right up here. Looking for just that entrance. So look for those stones, kind of the bricks to enter it. And it's got to be over here. When you kind of see like that weird shape, you know that you found the Halls of the Dead. Uh, so I'm going to be running left of the way that I come in, right? Um, so other stats that I don't really care about at all. Attacker takes damage. Um, you know, damage reduced by one, magic damage reduced by one. Stuff like that can be okay. But it's still, I'm running a very glass cannon build. Uh, I'm not going to care too much about all those little sorts of things, those little details. Um, see, what else do I not care about? Light radius, obviously, right? Can be nice, sure, but who really cares? And this is one of those where I might just drop it and run, right? That's just a nice way I can gain a little bit of experience. Um, is just kind of drop some experience shrines and then move on and have some things die. That way I'm not spending too much time focusing on like trying to kill them. Just drop a couple of experience shrines it'll, or a couple of fire traps. It'll clean everything up. Should have our boss group over here. And get our cube. Perfect. Get our ring. Perfect. Get our kill. Okay, great. Okay, so at this point uh, I'm going to run once again. Check for some faster runwalk boots. And I'm also checking the ones that are way too much. Replenish life. Also don't care about something like that, right? Charged bolts. I uh, don't care anything about those. We're literally just not caring at all. Uh, Megalair's got to be somewhere down this lower level. I'm pretty sure I checked the whole upper level. So I'm just going to check and kind of get close to this top. Looks like it's not going to be up there. Eh, nope, not off to the left. Okay, so it should hopefully be just off to the right here. Um, looks like we've kind of fourth weighed these maps a little bit. That's a little bit annoying. I guess I never split my act one. Uh, we might have fifth weighed them. I don't see the maggot there. Yeah, that's annoying. Hmm. Maggot lair? Where? So now we can do a little bit of map exploration, and I swear if it's in that tiny little corner where I was like, it could be here, but what are the chances? The chances are... <sighs> Mr. Llamas, chances. That's what they are. So, might be down in that little corner. Um... happens <laughs> it happens oh well uh, I wasn't gonna change anything there so that's a good thing to actually note is you might have seen that and you might have said oh mr. llama um, and once again I'm right to the right of the way I come in in the maggot lair so I'm just looking to see if there's any reason that I wouldn't want to run right right if I see like a, a circle there that might have where the exit is but just right of the way I come in and now I'm gonna go straight across so, very hard to hit things down here with your um, stuff, right? Very difficult to hit things. You have to. Your fire trap needs to be pretty much right on top of the monster. If your fire trap is not right on top of the monster, you are not going to be able to kill the monsters often in these narrow little halls. Wait, you might say, Mr. Llama, uh, what if you had found the maggot lair there? What would you have done differently? I would have done nothing differently because I still needed the waypoint. And this is because I did that forward-back strategy that I was doing and I was talking about. A little unlucky in this map right here, 
but this should tell us that it's going to be pretty much guaranteed off to the right and then to this up position. And when I say up, I mean up from the way I came in. Um, this is the whole block, remember. Whole block is how I'm talking about direction. So it's not I entered exit facing bottom left, I entered facing top right. Because this block right here, this exit right here is to the top right. So that means that the across way is going to be the way I want to go. And you can see how I kind of set the positioning of all of those traps right there so that every monster would be hit, right? Once again, that is going to be kind of very important is how you're, how you're setting that up. And I have a bunch of tower runes. I might be morphing those together soon. I'll go ahead and take care of this stuff first. You don't really want to kill that boss in there. He's not worth the experience. And, of course, uh, he's going to chill you, so that's not fun at all. So we'll just keep pumping our vitality, making it harder to hit us. And this is literally, this is just kind of one of those terrible maps. It actually wouldn't have been a bad idea if I would have just reset. Um, just so I could gain more experience on my run over to the Lost City. Doing a reset probably would have been an okay idea. So I just save quit right there. And then I, if I save quit, I just have to make sure that I um, morph the items together in the cube before talking to Drognan. If you save quit and you don't morph the items together... Uh, it won't let you talk to Drognan effective. Like, it, it, they'll still block you out of the palace, and you'll be like, what's wrong? I have the pieces, but it's because you have to do that if you've saved quit since you collected the items. Kind of a weird bug uh, in the game. So at this point, I'm going to be looking for exits that are right near um, one of the corners, right? This is all I care about. I don't care about the waypoint. I don't care about any of these things. If, if it's hell or nightmare, I might care about the waypoint more. Uh, normal, I'm not expecting to die or have to reset pretty much ever in those instances. Um, so I'm going to check over here. Okay, so I know that the exit can't be right there. It can be on that initial come in, um, but it won't be in this case uh, because we have that chunk taken out. And if that chunk is taken out right next to it, it's not going to be there. Pretty much plain and simple. Um, kind of getting blocked in here. It's a little annoying. I like to try and refill kind of on the potions as I'm running around. Helps me from having to go home as much. And we ran right across the waypoint. It just happens to be uh, in this corner here. So we'll just run the wall. And actually, okay, so it's going to be down here. This chunk is high enough up that it's going to end before it gets low enough down. So it's going to chunk over again, which means we're going to have a fresh corner, which means we're going to have an exit. Simple as that. So that's how you knew the Valley of Snakes is down here. Um, and that's where reading maps can... That's why That's why reading maps is, is like so huge. That's why it's one of the best things that you can do when you all learn how to speedrun. Um, is learn how to read maps. Because things like that will save you minutes by being able to do that. And w that's what we do. Right? That's why if you're sitting there and you're running... You know, maybe like a 2 hour sorceress or a 150 sorceress or whatever it is. And you're like, man, I want to run sub 120. You know, how are those guys running sub 120? Like... I feel like I just don't understand what they're doing. They're just getting lucky. Um, you know, I wish I wish I could get lucky on the maps like they get lucky on the maps, whatever it is. Uh, but a lot of it is just reading the maps, right? Knowing to make, knowing not to go down that corridor, but to rather turn up here and come to this Claw Viper Temple because I know level two is going to be right here, which is left of the way I come in. Um, so that stuff right there is that's what looks like luck and looks like accidents and looks like map packs. All of that stuff is what it actually is, right? That is us calculating and planning and always readjusting based on what new information we have in a map and then changing our mind based on that. So I just want to identify, once again, maybe go look for some faster run walk boots. No faster hit recovery. All right, 17 faster hit recovery is pretty good. Replenish life, still don't really care. I'm going to get rid of that. Also, things like enhanced damage and everything like that, I don't care about at all on this character. Uh, okay, I actually have that. So now, I'll, I like to go ahead and just morph the pieces right now. Peace of mind. Also, if I did save quit, then I don't have to worry about that being bugged out. And we'll just keep pumping fire trap, and then I can move on here. So once I get to the, uh, next time I come home, I'm going to build my stealth. Actually, I can build it right now. Um, so there's a bug in this game, and I've talked about it before, but I'll talk about it again. Where when you build a stealth, you temporarily will get the faster unlock speed of the stealth. Um, and we can maybe see that right here. I'll start kind of running while I build it. And now you can see that I'm actually running faster, right? So I actually have this faster run walk speed from my stealth right now as if the stealth is active and not red. And then at some point, 
over the next minute, you'll see it die. <laughs> and I no longer will have that speed. And there's different things that can cause it to die off immediately. Um, but that's how it is. I'm actually going to run over to Fire Eye here. And I know he's fire enchanted, but his his uh, minion dudes are not. So I'm going to kill for them. There's an amulet right there. If this was a hell run, I might grab that amulet. I'm not going to run this top right path because it has the stairs. Stairs are my worst nightmare down here, right? My fire traps suck on the stairs. They're absolutely terrible. Cold enchanted, not very fun. I got hit by it. Also really not fun. Um, I need to try and avoid his Nova. There we go. Okay. So, once again, I'm going to start picking up less and less things on this character because it's just, I don't care. And I'm just going to try and cram my way through. Always try and find your way through monsters if you can. I know it's kind of dangerous, right? But, like, right there, there is a hole. Take the hole. Um, you can also use your fire trap as a really good stun. So, that's actually the best use of fire trap in my mind is using it as a stun, and here I just want to kind of watch out um, to make sure that I'm not going to get hit too much. So a lot of times, uh, specters can be tough, because sometimes they'll group up and run past you, other times they'll group up and run half past you, half not past you, and that's not nearly as fun. So first way, naturally, because no, I know. We didn't get a first way, because it's me. Um, so here I can either save quit, or I can go through this TP if it lets me, and we'll go through the TP. So I'm going to restock on my potions, and I'll go ahead and pop in. Wait, I already popped my stealth in. Let's go. Refill on potions here. You don't really need to buy... Having two stamina potions is, is literally so much right now. So I'm going to run cross map. This is going to be the TP way. Across from the flat map is the t teleport map. Across from the ladder map is the... Um, the one that has the, like, long, windy roads. So I'm going to run this way. If this isn't it, I'm going to run the bottom left because that's the long windy roads, but at least it's not a lot of ladders. And then worst case scenario, it's the ladder way, which it usually is always worst case scenario for me. So what's she going to do? Um, but I want to avoid that way as much as possible because ladders are going to slow me down a lot. So there's actually, you can't, you don't really get to read too much with the Arcane Sanctuary, but you can read which way is portals, which way is the straight path, things like that. So that's how you can kind of speed yourself up a little bit when you're when you're dealing with it. And hopefully it's, nope, not a second way. So if you ever see like those spikes on the ground there, spike holes, it's not gonna be that way. It's, it's pretty obvious which way it, it is um, when that happens. So there's gonna be these ladders, unfortunately. There's gonna be some staircases we'll have to deal with. Um, just because of the nature of the way that this path is directed. So if this path is going top left or bottom right, you aren't going to have these ladders like this. Uh, it's going to be more just of the windy, but when it goes top right or bottom left, it has these ladders on it. Uh, or these staircases, I should say, not ladders. So that kind of sucks. Um, but I'm just going to look forward to... And there's where the specters do the full, full trap on you right there. Kind of the unexpected trap. Uh, that can suck. <laughs> and you just have to really be careful. And always kind of know where your rejuve potions are, if you have any, so that you can immediately jump over to them if necessary. So, normally I'd try and find a way through. Couldn't really find one there. And once again, like I said, using the fire trap as a stunning mechanism is going to be, like, the greatest thing that you can do. Okay, we third weighed it. That's good, at least. Um, so we don't have to worry about the fourth way. Thank goodness. Because that last way is kind of annoying. And I'll kind of wait for these monsters. I'll stop a little short so that they'll move towards me. So that that way, I'm not having to fight them on, on the ladders. Ladders are awful. Here's always set positions. Just know your positions. Triangle is second from the right. Uh, so I'm just going to run straight to the right here. And this is going to take me to triangle. So the way that it goes is it goes circle, moon. Um, let me check that real quick. No, okay. I want to run left here, by the way. So it goes circle, moon, square, sun. This is from left to right. Uh, down, double down arrow, triangle, and then the um, circle over moon is your final one. Mm, 
Oh, that's the most fun. I really want my stealth. I'm kind of under leveled, so I'm gonna try and kill some things. I really wish I had beetles in here. Beetles in here would be amazing. You generally have like three groups of monsters. So right now I have zombies, skellies with their dudes, and then these undead gore belly guys. Um, so that's kind of the three monster groups I've drawn. Unfortunately, I haven't drawn myself the greatest boss groups. So, that's just something we'll have to deal with along the way. And we haven't had experience shrines either at all this run. Have we had a single shrine? I don't think we have. Kind of annoying. I'm going to grab that health potion uh, just as a... just because. And I really want to get my stealth pumping, so I really just want that level 17. There we go. Oh, that's so much nicer. So much nicer. And we have our exit. That worked out nicely. So a lot of times it can give you really crazy what you have to deal with down here in these maps. Um, we got a little lucky right there. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to grab some thawing potions. Thawing potions are 50 seconds per. Uh, and see what we have there. Fire res. Not bad. I'm going to store those for a little bit later. Fire res is way more important to me in Act 4 than anything I have right now. I have really just been unlucky with, uh, with that stuff. With my... Um, Whatever. Were there white boots there? I might grab some white. No, there were no boots. He just said, she just said gloves. I should have grabbed white boots so that I could use my malice on it. That's actually the one mistake that I feel like I've really made um, so far. It's not using my malice on boots earlier. Around level 14, I like to use it uh, to try and get some fast runlock boots. What's the earliest level you can get them? Maybe 12? It might be a little faster uh, for that faster runlock modifier. But 12 to 14 is usually when you want to try and do that. And you just see uh, see what it is or whatever not. Thank you, Wounding Bean, for the sub, by the way. Um, okay, so just killing Duriel. You'll notice that I'm really focusing on having just two traps running at a time. We kind of talked about this earlier. Um, because you have to run around with Duriel a little bit more, you kind of want to just double set. And then you can every now and then drop a fire trap on him, but you generally want to just kind of watch and see. So now I'll drop some right there, and then see, when I stop to do too many of those, my fire traps stop hitting. Probably not worth it as much. So let's go for that kill. Ooh, nice heavy boots. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So this will be good for later on. Level 20 required, but 40 fast for unlock. So amazing boots, but the problem is we can't use them till, of course, level 20. Uh, so we'll just put those away. I'll check one more time to see if there's fast runoff boots or just white boots. There's fast runoff boots. Perfect. So now I'm going to save up for some strength. Um, and we'll just go from there. So now I don't have to use that. And a lot of times you can actually find fast runoff boots. I think this is something that we have underutilized. I'm going to be buying the light potions. Oh, I don't have enough gold. Great. Uh, I can actually sell some potions there, so that'll be fine. All right, well, running out of potions and, and gold is not great. Um, fun. All right, I have an extra tower rune I can sell, actually. So you always want to kind of be aware of what you're doing for gold. I have just not found anything worth a dang uh, for gold this run. I've picked up all those scepters. I've picked up that gnarled staff. A lot of times, one of those would have been worth 10 grand um, for having some plus skills on it or something. That would have helped, right? Did not have anything worth 10 grand. Uh, or even five grand or anything. They were all zero skills, so that's unfortunate. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for spider cavern, and I always check down this bottom right corner and then a little bit up to this top, see if there's an exit actually going out to the top right. There's not. Some of the times the map will have the exits to the top right. This jungle is always horrible, right? Things that you want to look for. You're going to have about three entrances in the spider forest. I say about because every now and then there will be like a weird fourth one that's connecting to a great marsh or something like that. Um, you want to stick to the left side as much as possible while you're down here. And I'm just going to kind of kill things as I run. Because um, I do need experience. So I actually want to check here and see if this kicks off to the right. Because it has that weird river. You can see how this might be a great marsh. We'll see what it is. You can see how the, the river kind of stuck out right there. There's, there's kind of weird patterns that you just have to, to see in this game. That's all I can say. There's weird patterns you just have to see in this game. Um, and so because I saw that river stick right there, I knew that I should run to the right and check out if there's something off to the right there. That to me tells me there might be a flare jungle skip or a great marsh skip in this run, which is awesome. 
Right, we love we love these skins. Um, so this right here, we see Sark down here. Um, there's also kind of like set maps. Ah! Stay away from Sark. There's also set maps down here. Um, so you kind of want to just look for that thing. And I'm going to grab these light gauntlets because, it's, once again, I don't have money right now. I'm, like, absolutely broke. So as soon as I have to refill on potions, I'm going to need to sell things to at least get enough just for that. So I'm going to kind of grab random bet bits of gold and things. Uh, Jade figurine, I don't care right now. I just don't care at all. So this is going to kick off not to the left. Okay. So we need to go check now what we have down to this bottom right. There is something over here. It's either the Great Marsh or the Flare Jungle. That is nearly guaranteed for me, um, and we're just going to see which one it is, and it's Great Marsh. Crap. Okay, uh, that's fine though. This tells me that there's a decent chance still that we have a skip, just because of the nature of the way that it's pushing the Great Marsh out of the way. That leaves a lot of room going to the top into this top left, that there could be a Flare Jungle or up and around, and then Flare Jungle over there, right? So even if I don't get a skip to the Great Marsh. I might get a minor skip, and this is one of the cases where sticking to the left doesn't work, by the way. But it, majority of the time, you want to stick on that left. Get my faster run walk for my burst of speed. This is like the one little map generated piece. But once again, get cross over to the left as fast as I can. Um, I don't care about entering any more of these little areas, so I'm not going to go in to the right here. And I knew there was an area to the right there because of the way that map piece is. Whenever you have to cross that double bridge in the center, there's always going to be an exit to the left. Whenever you have that single, um, like that, and there's no bridge right there, then you know that it's going to be one off to the left right there. So you can kind of tell where your exits are going to be. Um, ah, dang it. No. That stinks. So now I'm actually going to enter through here. Uh, that was a really short, really short spider forest. We had such a good chance to. We had such a good chance of getting a skip, and it just didn't end up skipping for us. But I'm going to go through here uh, and just see if there is an exit that might be leading off on this right side that will connect me to the Great Marsh. And it doesn't look like it. Ugh, just drew a bad map. But I did get this right here, and I set a waypoint, which, hey, look at that. We're at the Great Marsh again. So this is a great way, and this is why setting waypoints as checkpoints can be very helpful, right? So a lot of times you have to think about how can I set this, right? How can I reach these kids? Um, you have to think about that for how can I set a waypoint so that I'm always in the future if I need to ever, if I find a waypoint and I know I'm going the wrong direction, I can get to where I need to be faster. And that's kind of always the thought process behind setting those waypoints. I'm just going to be dropping these kind of all around because I am a little bit under leveled from where I'd like to be. Uh, resist fire is great to have going into the flare jungle, especially since I'm not level 19 yet. And at level 19, by the way, I will need a two open socket staff. I did not shop one prior. I will need to go shop one of those. Um, I'm just going to want to find a blank one for 158, 168 gold, whichever number that is. You can never really read it, can you? With Diablo 2. Um, so we'll just keep moving forward and just trying to find the exit. There's going to be a kickoff right there. Once again, remember that Remember that river piece I showed you before? There's that river piece again. Uh, if this leads us to the Flitter Jungle, we'll see, right? It's either going to be a dead end up here, and I'll have to run all the way back to that river piece, or it's going to be... Uh, it looks like a dead end. Oh, gosh dang it. <laughs> or it's going to be not. Um... <laughs> Looks like we catch the dead end, though. So we're going to have to run all the way back to that piece. And you say, Mr. Llama, why didn't you drop a TP there? Well, the reason is because I'm not going to be entering and exiting through all of those areas. Um, and we can actually look off right here. Because we have that river kind of going that way. So let's see if this is going to lead us off in that direction. Nope. Okay. So it, it was that first piece that I saw. So that's where you have to take a guess. Um, that's where it's literally 50-50. You say, well, it either is going to break off to the right or it's going to keep going straight up. One of them is going to lead me to a dead end. The other one's going to lead me to the flare jungle. In this case, it was the one that we didn't take. And I feel like more often than not, it's the one we didn't take. So flare jungle, right off the bat, I'm already disappointed by the boss groups. Um, we have birds and we have shooters. And that kind of sucks. The best ones are soul killers. If I can walk into an area just full of all the soul killers in the world... Um, I'll be a happy camper, right? At least while I need experience. If I don't need experience, this is like the best groups to draw. 
because I don't have to worry about anything. And that guy was cold enchanted, and it kind of stinks that we were right there and had to get hit by him. Um, wasn't a great area around it. So we'll just kind of have to drop our traps. And you might say, Mr. Lama, soul killers can trap you really quickly and kill you. Yes, this is very true. Soul killers can be a very dangerous group to have to be around. But um, they're just worth so much experience that all of them packed together is worth a ton. And we heard some armors drop, uh, so I want to grab that because I need armor. Or I need gold, I should say, not armor. So I'm still running around pretty naked, right? No boots, gloves are pretty iffy. Um, my fast run walks off. This is nice, we found this area. I'm just gonna kind of run through, pop that. Oh, I shouldn't have popped it. <laughs> I don't even have enough gold to identify my items. Um, all right, hopefully this is worth gold. It's worth something. Magic find, you can kind of care about. Um, I don't care about it enough in this instance though. I just don't care about it enough in this instance. And there we got some gold. And once again, I'm going to be buying these um, the biggest health potions I can always get. And then light mana potions will be just fine for me. So because I went to town, uh, after spawning this, I'm actually sometimes not going to have Gidbin guy. Which if you look, you'll see. You'll say, hey, Mr. Llama, where's the Gidbin? Yeah, that was my bad. That was called Mr. Llama Stupid. So that's allowed. Uh, so now I don't get the Gidman because I popped that. <laughs> and then went to town immediately before he spawned. If you do that, you just don't get it. He disappears. <laughs> he just disappears. Uh, I also filled up two and two when I wanted to go one and three. So I'm going to have way too many health potions now. Uh, which is unfortunate. And I need to be really careful about how I run. I need to always make sure that I'm avoiding that fire spray because that's going to be awful. I have nine fire res and nine fire res is no bueno. Um, did I set a TP over there? I want to say yes, but I'm kind of scared I didn't. I'm going to set another TP right here. <laughs> I'm going to set another TP right here just in case because who really knows? Uh, and that would be pretty awful if I didn't. So once again, I need to be getting experience down here. This is kind of unfortunate um, that we have such a bad footer jungle and we didn't get the waypoint. If I had found the waypoint immediately, I would have reset. I would have just immediately backed out, come back in and hope for better boss spawns, but we didn't get it. So there's once again gonna be three entrances here. Um, one of them is gonna be a blank like that. One of them is going, so two of them will have water. That one it has water and is blank. The other one has water and has a waypoint. And then the third one is going to be where your uh, Flare Dungeon is. So I know that this one has to be the waypoint. Like, that's what this is going to be. It's going to be water, and then it's going to lead me to the waypoint. There we go. And I can just take that back to Curious Ducks. And we'll continue around. Um, and yeah, a little bit of extra time spent. I probably did have a, a TP up, but it was worth it to me to not do that. So after I finish this Flare Dungeon, I'm probably going to save quit. Reason being is I want to try and spawn new monsters uh, on the way over there, right? Once again, be careful of the fire breathers. I'm almost level 19 though, um, so I can almost go get uh, my leaf staff, which will be very helpful. That's going to get me plus three fire skills, which is going to be huge in dealing extra damage. Uh, so flare dungeon, I always want to be running to the left of the way that I come in. I always want to be running to the left of the way I come in. See, champion group, really nice actually. I'll probably just get that all taken care of here in a bit. And I actually want to kind of push that level 20, maybe a little faster than normal, uh, which is extra reason that I'm kind of like, darn it, we don't have the experience right now. Well, there you go. There's the experience that I didn't have. So now I'm actually going to run a little bit around this flare jungle. Which sounds a little weird, but there's decent monsters in here, and I actually have really, I have this experience shrine. Um, so I kind of want to take advantage of it because I need that experience anyways. So we'll see what monsters we can kind of grab a little bit extra. I know I should be going left, but you know, we want to get a little bit more experience down here. Splint mail is worth good money. A lot of body armors are worth good money. If you just need a, a quick pick me up on money funds, that is a good thing to do. Just grab some of those. Once again, I'm setting more than two fire traps right now uh, because I'm setting them in different areas. So the way that they're going to be spreading their flames, attacking or whatever is kind of important. Um, and I'll have this experience shrine going down here. 
And at this point, I might not save and quit because I have this shrine. So, I'm going to... I know there's the boss at the end of this act that I want to fight. Um, and I, if I can have the experience shrine for him as well, that will be really helpful. So, that guy is always fire uh, immune. So, we just want to kill all of his minions. And then move forward. Identify all the items. And just be really quick over here. And I'm actually going to get rid of that. Strength, gold from monsters. Don't care, right? Just don't care at all. And I'm going to do that so I can put on my other faster run walk boots right now. And we'll switch to our fire. So at this point, we're going to get that two open socket staff. That doesn't cost an arm and a leg. And I'm just going to do a quick reset. Whenever you leave town, you have to leave town to another act or another area within that act and then come back, refresh all the items. Just looking for two open sockets. And I should have done this earlier, it would have been easier to find, but this is unfortunate um, that I waited this long. Mm, 12,000, I'm really broke, there we go. Okay, so we have that, and let's go back to our flare jungle. Uh, tier, Ral. Get this out here. Take these organs out. Ral, okay. Oh my gosh. All right, I'll just waste my whole experience shrine. That's good. And experience shrine's gone. Ugh, that kind of stinks. We are 19 and a half now, so we're actually pretty close to caught up on our experience of where we want to be. So I'm just going to run around the staff here. Um, once again, staff is awesome because I get plus three to fire skills. So now you can see that my wake of fire does way more damage. And so does my fire trap. Really nice. Just kind of hit enough so that I know he's going to do good, do good damage. I'm actually going to stop. Normally I wouldn't pick up these gloves, but I'm going to stop and do this so we can look at them and see. All right, so already they're good, right? They've got enough fire res. They have more fire res than my current gloves. Um, so that's really nice. Right, 29 fire res. Absolutely amazing. Dexterity, don't care about. Attack rain, don't care about. One to passive skills, who cares? Um, that chance to cast charge bolt, I'd be a lot happier if it was something else. Plus to poison res, I don't care about. Plus to light res, I don't care about. But we know that we have the uh we know that we have the experience or the fire res right there which is absolutely huge so now you can see my fire res is 68 that's going to be extremely helpful going forward cute dog thank you for the massive host appreciate that man welcome everybody this is a quiet stream a little bit today because i'm just going to be talking through my run so i'm sorry if i'm not chatting much with you guys but wow thank you so much um so this is kind of like what a gdq run looks like so just talking through uh, what I'm looking for. So I know that my, I entered over there. Sewers is always going to be kind of this way, right? Sewers is kind of in the middle of the map. You have your two entrances um, that you're going to be looking for. I'm going to run always to the left or in a clockwise motion when I come into the sewers. The reason that I'd run in a clockwise motion is because uh, of the way that the map spawns it off. So there we go. We found it. It's right above us. Um, it's, it's kind of like in the catacombs level two. Right? Kind of similar to the Catacombs level 2, if you have to think about why I'm running that way, because I know there's something that if I see it, I know I need to run left of that way. So there's the chest down here in this level. There is there is a chest in the bottom of Act 3. Or bottom, in, in the sewers, sorry. Um, there's a chest in the sewers. And if you see that chest, you know that it is going to be to the right of that chest. And once again, what does to the right mean? It's the right of the way that the chest is angled. I know it can be a little confusing. That's just one of those things where I have guides on how to do that. Uh, experience shine is really nice. I know I exited from the top left sewer, so I just need to run to this centerpiece so I can keep running forward to the Travancle so I can kill the Trav. Um, nearing level 20, and once again, I like I said, because I have those sanders, getting level 20 a little bit early isn't the worst thing I've ever done. Uh, so I actually won't mind here, and if I get level 20, as soon as I get it, I'm going to be heading right back, so that way I can go get whatever I need. I um, need to be careful. One of these guys is cursed, and I don't want to get cursed with my experience trying that badly, but it's going to happen, I'm pretty sure. So, oh well. Go ahead and morph this puppy here. Get rid of my dagger. I just don't care anymore about the dagger. Just don't care. Uh, set this up, and while I'm up here, I might as well kill a few of these guys, because once again, I am looking for experience on this character right now. Um, would be very nice. And there we'll go, move forward. So this is left of the way I come in. Hey, another experience shine. Left of the way I've come in is going to be my exit to level 2. 
So you're saying, why are you running to the right, Mr. Llama? Well, it's because the left is facing to the bottom left. So that means that the right of the left is to the bottom right. How does that work? So now I'm facing to the top left, and I need to run straight across. This is Durrance level 2. need to run straight across Durrance level 2. So I'm going to be sticking kind of to this right wall on this map um, to try and get me across uh, in the most efficient manner before I'm kind of going on those cut-ups. I know that there's also a waypoint to the left, right? So if I'm, jeez, experience trans galore. Uh, so, eh, a little unfortunate in our mapping there. We'll just have to keep going. And it should be right over here, I would imagine, after this exit through, it should be to our level. Because we're kind of running out of how much space this map can take. Um, this map gets absolutely huge in Nightmare and Hell. It's absolutely insane how large it is. Um, I like to kill this guy right here sometimes. Or at least force it so he's not going to chase me. He's going to chase me. So we'll go ahead and kill him off. Uh, here you can either do your cheeky stuff where you go cross the, cross the map. Or you can just stick right here and fight with him. Personally, I like just sticking and fighting with him. I don't really like all the time wasted to run over there. So there's a specific range that you want to stick with Mephisto. If you run with Mephisto, he will chase you, and a lot of times he will chase you further than you wanted to go. So you always want to stick within kind of this specific range. I'm kind of right at the edge of his range right now, um, so that he's not going to hit me with a Frost Nova. At the same time, uh, and this is kind of, you have to just gauge for him, right? You watch him. In between his attacks, you can usually get a couple of your traps down, and then some fire traps. Then between the next attack, a couple traps down, a couple of fire attacks. Just kind of bouncing back and forth between setting those traps and fire blasting him. And I'm out of mana, but that's okay. Perfect. Perfect run out of mana timing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drink these potions up. I'm going to want this gold a little bit more since we have been having gold issues throughout this game. Grab the pike, throw that in there, and we will just kind of continue on here. So that was a decent act three. Um, and I have that level 20, which means we have our sanders, which means, hooray, faster run max speed. Always good. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and sell, 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 sell. Hopefully get some gold. I don't actually need my cube anymore. Uh, I can just put it on the ground because this is a normal run. So who cares, right? So that just right there, that'll save me a little bit more space. We have our lifer um, do this number. So once again, kind of buying smaller potions. Mana or light mana are fine here. And then a couple staminas uh, aren't, the, aren't the worst thing to get. So 14k gold. Not the greatest. Um, the good news is we don't have to buy the expensive potions, so buying light mana potions helps us a lot. If we had 14k gold as a sorceress right now, I would be extremely sad. Uh, I am level 20. I don't care about killing anything. From this point on in the game, if you are not a boss or in my way, I do not care to kill you one bit. Um, that is purely a waste of my time to ever drop that down. I'm going to be entering... Uh, the next area here soon and you might say Mr. Llama you have zero lightning reds and there's souls there what if they kill you um, they won't so this is normal this isn't hell plans of despair right so watch watch this guy hit me first off I can dodge it but second off look at the damage that I took right 31 damage uh, who cares right it's not enough to put me into a stun it's not enough to I, they would have to be a boss group with conviction aura for me to really care right they do like 510 damage a pop because I just have so much freaking life as an assassin. Um, and in normal, it's just it's just not enough. I just don't care. So even though I have zero lightning res, I don't care. You know what I do care about, though? Fire resistances. I care a ton about fire resistances. So I'm kind of running edges right here. I want to check right there is where the first exit could be. Second exit could be right here. Third exit can be right up here. So there's set determined positions that you can have your exits. And I know that's going to be this top left one because we have that chunk cut out on that right there. So that's why I ran straight up to this exit right here. I knew where the exit was going to be as soon as I discovered that missing chunk. Um, running around the city of the danged. This just kind of is unfortunate because this is just a nightmare. It's just random out here. There's, there's nothing. Um, just once again, know it's a square or a rectangle map. So you kind of want to be covering as much ground as you possibly can. Um, and there we go. We just found it. You want to be on the insides just covering. Whenever I get a skill shrine on the assassin, I'm always going to be charging that uh, re -bur my burst of speed again because I'm going to get more faster run work from that. And you can see we are flying. We are flying today, which is great. 
Um, well, I'll just be getting to the exit. I want to run as straight across as I possibly can, and I just have to kind of adapt uh, to different maps that I see and sometimes take guesses um, on ways I need to go. In this case, I'm never, I haven't had to make a single guess this whole map. I knew exactly the way to the River of Flame this entire map just from the way that it was, right? Just from the way that it looked, we knew where to go. Uh, this way I'm going to run to the top left. These are set pieces as well. There's two set pieces stacked on top of each other. We just went through the first one, and the exit was going to be, or the way through is going to be on the left. They're kind of like little mazes. We'll get to the second one here in a second, and as soon as we approach it, I can tell you which way we need to go. And you'll just have to learn these, and here we go. We just need to run straight. So we run to the right, and then we just run down the straight down the middle for the second path, and that'll lead us into the area. So once again, not guessing at all, right? This is known directions, these are known things. I'm gonna set this in case I die, because I am cursed, and I'm not gonna get through there. I am gonna get through there, wow. <laughs> as soon as I got decrepified and got trapped there, I figured I was done for. Um, so over here, I'll be looking for the way this is. Uh, the reason I say the way that this is, I'm gonna kind of clear that area out, is you have a long way and a short way around, and then it's gonna alternate. You can see this is the short way. I wanna run short way to short way. So this is why I run on the short way, and then I cross over, because this is going to get me to the other short way, and those are the easiest places to get trapped. Sometimes you run the long way if it's 100% necessary. You want to avoid that if you possibly can. Uh, getting a skill shrine right now is kind of pointless because it's just gonna get taken off of me. I'll probably save that for Diablo instead. Um, didn't really want to pop that seal there. This is absolutely disgusting, and I'm actually going to die, and that is totally fine. That's why we set our safety TP. A uh, little bit annoying how many things were actually there. I didn't mean to pop that seal, by the way, which didn't help the cause, but definitely did not kill us. There was just way too much stuff that was trapping us. So we still do enough damage naked, and that's totally fine. If this was hardcore. I would be a little bit safer and running through there. Um, but it's not so we can take those risks because I'd say I'd say 29 out of 30 times I'm not gonna run into enough monsters there where I'm gonna die Right, so it just happened to be where everything was there um, And that's going to you know lead to our death and once again That's where you know you have to play a little bit a little bit safer in hardcore But softcore you know if you want to be running those fastest times you possibly can sometimes you gotta take a little bit of a risk so we gotta come down here, and there are just a lot of monsters. I need to be very careful about how I run this back. Getting out of there um, is very careful. And I have these guys on tether, but I don't really want them on tether. I want to get the boss in here, because I want to do as much damage as I can to him. And since we have him here, and none of the uh, Decise or Oblivion Knights, I'm gonna kind of hover around here and do a little bit more damage to him. And now this will get cursed off, but I got kind of some use out of it. Still probably would have been more worth it to save it, though. This is just a very ugly um, level right now, by the way. You always kind of want to have some space that you can be safe to run to. As you can tell, uh, I don't have a single bit of like safe space to run forward. Every time that I move forward to the next area, it's covered with mobs. And fire traps, while they kill very quickly, can sometimes take an extra second or two to kill. And I don't always have an extra second or two to kill. So we can kind of see right here. Um, I'm going to pop this and I'm going to handle both of these monsters at the same time. The reason is because he has a lot of fire res, right? Infector just has, just naturally pit lords have some fire res built into them. So I'm going to try and kill him and Decise kind of at the same time here. Uh, make it a little bit easier for myself. That way they pop at a similar time and that's why you go, that's why you always go there and do the drags first um, and then kind of move forward. Grab the emerald, that'll be worth some gold. Make sure our burst of speed is up. We'll move to the final guy over here. So what I'm gonna need for Grand Vizier uh, is I'm going to need to make sure that I have a mercenary that can kill fire res. And once again, just trying to run past, I'll clear out the area where Vizier is because I'm going to need my mercenary to survive. Um, so I need to make sure this area is kind of clear. And just like all the other areas, it is not clear at all. It feels like certain maps um, just kind of have spawn. So I'm going to go back to Act 3 to get a Merce for this, by the way. You could also get an Act 2 Merce if you wanted. Um, kind of up to you. Act 2 Mercenary, though, you would have to play a little differently when you were, and I want to find Cold. Narfet is our man. Um, you could find, get an Act 2 Merce if you really wanted to. That would be good on gold. That should be enough kind of for the rest of the game. I don't need to worry too much about it. 
So I just need to be careful, make sure he stays alive. And pop this seal. We've got everything pretty cleared out. And then I'll take care of all these little guys. And then hopefully they'll be getting there soon. So I can also go ahead and swap over to staff bashing. It's not a lot of damage, but hey, it's a speeder. We're trying to do as much damage as we possibly can. Come on, Narfet. So Narfet's level 17, which kind of sucks. Um, level 17 is better than level 18, though. Which I know sounds stupid, but it is. 17 does more damage than 18, but 19 is a nice bump up. So you really want to find a level 19 there if you can. Uh, but you, you want him to be cold. I, I didn't see a level 19 cold. Um, so Narfet was our man. Oops. Want to make sure that I set this correctly. And if I take a good job. So once again, two traps because of next delay. And then the rest, I just want to be me popping. The rest are just me popping off here. My skill shrine might have come back. Skill shrines do replenish. I kind of want to check it really quick. It did not. Some shrines will replenish. Experience shrines will not. A lot of other shrines like fire res and things like that will. That is unfortunate, but we're just going to be out of mana. So I'm just gonna have to go back for mana here. Come on. And sell there and just get some mana potions. That should be enough to kill him. I said our safety just in case. And you can see they put a bone prison up on that. That's something to remember so that if I do come back, I need to make sure I immediately set another TP. Um, just in case. And that new TV that I set when I come back through it will actually be outside of that bone prison. So I could then take it back and then retake it through. Or I could just kill the bone prison and then just have that TV set up. But that's always good because sometimes they'll do a lightning trap on you, which can just be awful. So, you know, big things. There we go. There's my skill shrine. Big things to note um, are set a couple of those. Avoid his lightning breath and things like that. I don't really care too much about the fire. That fire, I'll step out of the way just a little bit. Lightning breath is really the worst thing. It's half physical, half lightning damage. So if your defense is low and whatever, I mean, he hits pretty hard, right? It does some good physical damage. So you just have to be a little bit careful uh, right there. I'll go ahead and drink this. Didn't really need to, but that's okay. And I kind of catch the tail end of him sometimes. That's totally fine. All right, that'll work, and there, and grab one more piece. There's a field plate, that works for me. Okay, so we'll move forward right here. Um, just sell all this stuff for some good yummy gold, beautiful. And that is more gold than we'll ever need. So now I can kind of upgrade, because I have so much gold, I can kind of upgrade my potions a little bit. I can also buy the rest of my potions in act five, if I really want to. With 50K gold, I'm not gonna be nearly as worried about it. Um, so I'm just going to be moving forward here, not worrying at all uh, about killing a single thing, right? I'm not even going to really care. I could care uh, if I want to kill Shank. Shank would be the only thing I might consider killing. Um, reason being is he would half the cost of potions in Act 5, but I still don't think I'm going to need it. I have 51,000 gold, and I'm not buying greater mana potions or anything. So I still think that I should be fine. I shouldn't ever need to get gold again in this um game and that's another thing that you have to kind of manage right you have to manage your gold your levels your experience i don't want to get hit by those guys shots always watch for those shots if they're chasing you avoid them because they are cold right those guys are cold enchanted so they will deal cold damage to you which means you have to run around cold for a little bit and that slows you down so i'm always just kind of looking for the fastest way up these stairs once again never trying to kill anything if i can a lot of times running up the right side can be pretty good uh, you don't run into a lot of monsters running on this right edge, so you'll see a lot of speedrunners kind of running that right edge. And just trying to take any stairs up whenever I can, because when I get to that next level of stair, um, you know, then I'm, I've avoided it. So there's Shank, and I'm just going to avoid the Shank, right? I just don't care. Uh, drink a stamina potion. This is why having, like, three stamina potions is good. So at this point, I need to look which way do I need to go. I know I need to go to the top left. How do I know that? Because I saw a staircase right there. I also see this. Whichever way this is facing is the way that you need to run. 
Whichever way, a sink, any, if you see any staircase or that red portal, if it's facing top left, then you have to go top left. If it's facing top right, you need to go top right. I'm going to run along this right edge here because the right edge is generally the fastest way through. Um, you either have one door or zero doors. Uh, and that's quite often here. So this is going to be one door again. It's kind of just like set maps and you can set a couple traps right in front of you. Save the babas. Nope. Sorry, babas. You're dead to us. This isn't a hell run. In a hell run, I would save the barbs, of course, because I want to get that uh, Ral or Tal so we can make Ancient's Pledge a little bit later. You can sometimes get caught on those stairs right there. Um, those monsters like to group up. So here I have to see if I want to run top right or top left. The way that I decide this is by running straight up. By running in this straight up pattern, I'm going to hit the wall either way. And it's either going to kick me off to the... Oh, there we go. We found a staircase. So I, need to, I, I now know I need to go to the top there. And I can run on this left wall, and this is similar, going to have um, one one door each time. Uh, and sometimes you'll run into a, z not a zero door, sometimes you'll run into, um, actually, I actually think it's always one doors when you're running down the left side. So if I ran on the bottom, sometimes I could run on zero doors. But we ended up running top, we got one doors, that's fine. But yeah, the reason I did that is because I would have run into a wall either way, and either wall is beneficial for me to note. It either kicks me off to the top right or top left. But I'm not choosing a direction specifically until I see a staircase of some nature. So here I want to run to the left of the way that I've come in. That is this way. If I want to go Frozen River, Frozen River is straight across from the way I came in. Notice this is the block, right? I've come in facing top left, not facing towards the bottom left. Some people might say, Mr. Lama, you came in facing bottom left. No, that's just the exact entrance you have to look you have to think bigger picture you have to think in blocks when you think of diablo 2 my whole entrance block kicks me off to the top left so that's why i run to the top left here or to the top uh or to the left i should say so this is going to be my exit and then once again same thing it looks like waypoint is going to be just over here so the waypoint is pretty much always going to be on this other side and i'll actually run down here to show you it could be over there as well uh, and it looks like it is. Okay. So our waypoint is not right here. A lot of times waypoint will be right there. So that's a great way to grab a quick waypoint before you run off. Um, if you want to go back to the frozen river or something, it's a good step me point. Uh, but it looks like the waypoint will actually be just on the other side of the um, entrance right there. Because the waypoint is going to be on the downward direction from the way that you come in. And a lot of times there's not any of the map extending down. And so it just happens to be like right next to it. So that's always good to note. Ancient's Pledge, you're going to have your waypoint off to the right side. Uh, I don't care to get any waypoints. This is a normal run. Once again, if this was in hell or something, uh, I would probably care more about getting that waypoint. And I just want to kill things to make sure they get out of the way so I can keep running forward. Um, sometimes, like I say, when you run these right walls, sometimes you can run with a no-door setup. Depends the layout. Um, but I just want to move to the middle here. And continue forward. Oh my gosh. So to the bottom right would be where the waypoint is. I don't care about that. I want to run to the top left because I am looking to get the exit. So in this case, you might say, Mr. Lama, there is no top left. That is correct. We're going to look for some sort of wraparound. So I'm going to look for a wall that kind of is up here, right? You'll see it on my map, like up above me. There it is. That's most likely going to be where it is. Sometimes you have a full wraparound. We didn't get that here. I'm guessing. I'm guessing this is going to be it. No. Okay. This will just continue upwards and then kick off left again. And then this is going to be it. And okay. We should be good on potions. So ancients, I like to kind of set them up in a spread pattern. Once again, only two at a time can hit these guys. Right? Right? We've discussed this chat. Only two at a time can hit these guys, so I'm just going to be dropping twos, twos, twos. Um, I want to be checking the life of Kalik and Talik and Korlik. Reason being is they can spawn with a lot of fire res, which it looks like Talik has. Uh, has he spawned with too much? Is the question. Has he spawned with too much? Doesn't look like it. We should be okay. So they will spawn with, with fire resistances. They spawn with random gear on. And there's actually specific pieces like Maddox has a helmet. Talik has, or like, you know, Maddox has a helmet, blah, blah, blah. Tal Korlik has a spear, blah, blah, blah. And they can spawn with fool's mods with enhanced damage. <coughs> Excuse me. With all sorts of various things. 
So that's why sometimes they'll hit you and you're like, holy crap, you just did like 400 times the damage you normally do. He might have something that deals 400 times the normal damage that he normally does, right? So he could just have spawned with amazing rare gear or something. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna set up two traps, and then I'm going to fire trap the rest, right? Two traps, and then I'm just flame blasting. Two traps, and then I'm just flame blasting. This is the this is the pattern because of next delay. Two traps, flame blast, and I want my flame blast to hit both of them. Also, Talik will not spin you in this location because he would spin off the edge. If he is standing from this angle, if he's on my side, he will spin. Close enough, we're gonna get him on our way to the exit here, so just run forward. And he should pop anytime now. There we go. And I'm just gonna continue to wake a fire, and we'll just look around. So, level one is just kind of a, a look, right? I just need to guess and see, hey, is it over here or not? Nope. Over here, I'm gonna check on this down path right here. Feels like it could be something. Looks like it's most likely, oh, it is gonna be something down here, okay. So this most likely is gonna lead me to it. This just has a good feel. Once you start getting in this like, through those sorts of areas and it opens up to a corner like that, it just has a good feel. Um, same idea, also my stuff is broken so I have less fire res. Uh, I want to run in a clockwise direction, once again, because I know that the waypoint is going to be left of the way that I come in. So I set that initial TP. I'm going to be running down here. This is going to be something. If it's waypoint, I'll take my TP back. It's not. We are good. This is why I ran in the clockwise direction, though. If I ran the other direction, it, I would have taken a while. I would have found the waypoint and then had to go forward uh, and find the exit. So if I need to do bail runs, I'll run in a clockwise direction there, or counterclockwise. Um, really just depends what the needs are of the run. And like I said, because this is a normal run, who cares? Um, level three, this looks a good, like a good exit. Once again, when you get to like that kind of corner and it kicks you out, a lot of times that's gonna be the way you need to go. Um, I'm running kind of dangerous right here with no health potions and there's death lords around and stuff. Uh, you might want to heal in these situations. Don't, don't be me, but I, I like to just live life on the edge, right? That's why I tell the ladies. Like, I ran an assassin with a third of her health through the Throne of Destruction. And they're like, never talk to me again. Who are you, anyways? Please leave. Uh, so we just want to clear this out really quickly. And after that, we'll go back and get our potions. So these potions are going to cost more than usual. Remember that. That is totally fine. Um, I also, once again, like I said before, don't have uh, the health that I need here, or the fire res because of my stuff, but I don't care because I don't really need fire res right now. Um, totally fine. So a lot of times you can buy stuff he'll, like before he does his double laugh or I could have waited. Um, you know, it would have been great. All right, so immediately I want to step up on him. The reason is because if you're standing next to him, he won't resurrect guys. He will spend his time instead meleeing you, and, and he only melees you, and, and so it removes his, like, resurrection skill, essentially, from the game, if you're standing right on him. He has fire enchanted, though, so you want to note that and move out of the way. Oh, just out of, just the wrong time. I was a little bit late. Uh, move out of the way before he explodes. Obviously, I could have tanked the explosion right now. I had full health. I was fine. Um, but I'm just trying to showcase for future if you have to deal with that guy and you're like low life, you don't want to be standing right on top of a fire enchant that can do a lot of damage, especially in Nightmare and Hell. Especially in Nightmare. Nightmare's where they'll do the most damage. So I'm going to kill wave one, I'm going to kill wave two. Wave three, uh, I will kill. Wave four, I will drag, and wave five, I will drag. And I'll actually use death strats for those waves. So we've got our traps down, I want them to kind of group up. These guys don't group very well, unfortunately. And if I can time it so I die from this guy at the same time I kill him, that's like literally the most, the best thing I've ever done if I can do it. Ah! Oh! Darn it, just missed it. Just missed it. Because then I would have already had my pre-dead body there. I wouldn't have to wait for using death strats. Okay, I can also just take my gear off, right? That's a That's a thing that you can do there. Okay, so we've got him. Let's get him on the drag. 
So I could just make myself naked and then uh, run out and die outside. That also works. It just depends how you're feeling that day, what you want to do. I felt like doing this. Oh no, is there a guy in here still? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You're awful. So majority of times they're gonna follow their boss. Every now and then they're gonna be really annoying like this. Every now and then they'll be super annoying like this. Man. It's rare that these guys don't follow like that. That happens. That happens. And I never want to like pick up my gold or anything at this point. I should have just immediately dropped my gold so I didn't lose like eight grand when I did that. Um, but that's totally fine. It is what it is. So we'll once again drag this next wave. Uh, reason being, we just need to get him outside of, like, this area. Not even the full area. This right here is far enough. That's totally far enough. Like, that's more than plenty far enough. They can be basically within the throne still. It's like, this is kind of like your line. Right around that on the map. We stock on some potions, and now we'll go into the same sort of setup. Bale takes a little bit of time. Uh, it's really annoying. Thank you, Bale. So we want to drop. Drop two, and then fire trap. Or fire blast. Drop two, fire blast. Drop two, fire blast. And this is just kind of the patterns that we will run through for killing Bale. You try not to get hit by his cold stuff. Kinda sucks when he has a clone. I might just go despawn his clone, honestly, here pretty soon, because it's just really annoying. Yeah, all right, we're gonna go despawn his clone. So to despawn his clone, you get far enough out of sight. You run over here, you get far enough away, just overall. And then your clone should be despawned. You should be fine. So we'll come back and clone's gone. You can tell if the tentacles start disappearing. That means the clone's gone as well. Everything will despawn in that area. So really the only thing that I'm looking for is making sure that I'm not getting hit by Frost Nova. Or that right there. You always want to look for his windup. Making sure that my... So annoying. Making sure that my fire traps are uh, able to hit him. And while you're chilled and stuff, a lot of times if you don't have thawing potions, that's a good time to like restock your potions. Man, that's just just bad luck on the uh, on the bales so far. Just bad luck. Yeah, if you can avoid those, it's good to avoid them. It can kind of be difficult with two of them. And it, it also really depends where you're at. Like, if I'm down here, avoiding it from, like, him can be a little bit difficult. If the other... Okay, yeah. If the clone fires one at me, I can't dodge it right now. So, I'm just going to have to tank that. There's no way to escape that, unfortunately. So I'm just going to try and focus the main one. And once again, how do you know which one is real, Mr. Llama? Look at the demon under the name. First off, the other one takes a lot more damage, right? The clone takes way more damage. But additionally, look at the demon under the name. Here, the demon is offset from the B. The B and the D do not line up. Look at the B and the D. This is the real one. The fake one, look at the B and the D, right? Bam, bam. Look at how the demon moves underneath Bale's name. That's how you can tell the difference between them. Jeez, these guys are painful. Alright, let's screw it. Let's just go. We're gonna do this. We're gonna get a couple more potions. That should be enough potions to finish and hopefully despawn. And once again, if we see tentacles drop down, we know it's despawn. There weren't any tentacles to despawn, so we're totally fine. Now, I wanna stay out of range of Bale's breath there. Because that mana breath can just be really annoying. It gets a lot longer in hell. It gets so much longer in hell. 
So, yeah, just like right out of range of that is always good. That also gives you enough time to react um, in the event that he's dropping down that fire or the Nova. So we can always camp watch for that. And tentacles can also do some damage to you, so you gotta be a little bit careful with those guys. And this is a lot cleaner. This is how you want your bail to be. No clone, no Novas. There's another clone. He should die pretty fast, actually, though. So if I can set up my, uh, my traps, they'll actually hit both of them pretty easily. And then he'll die, the clone will die really fast just from that. That's really nice, and once again, just kind of moving around, just getting the finishing blows off here. Man, a lot of clones. A lot of clones today. And Bale is... Dead? Dead? Dead. There you go. GG. Um, so that's kind of just a basic speed run through the game. Uh, we can kind of look at loot gear and stuff and I could talk about all the stats on these things I know I didn't talk quite as much on the gear as I would like But I can kind of talk that right now eighth sin. Thank you for the sub by the way um, So we can just look at these things so increased attack speed. I do like that on a on a uh, assassin Right, I do like that on assassin. Oh, yeah, I mean this wasn't gonna be a world record run That's not a PB or a world record. Sorry. That's on a I don't know what these splits are. These splits are like my average of the runs I was doing for practice for GDQ, I think. So, faster than that. Um, so, increased attack speed, really good. I care about this a ton for this character. Uh, for other characters, can also be very good, right? Unless it's a caster, in which case I care not at all. 95 enhanced damage, that's actually really nice. Enhanced damage is super great. For this character, don't care. For a melee character, really good, right? Or bows on, things like that. I mean, think about like wind force, things like that, right? Enhanced damage is really huge. Um, so you want to have that. Adds 4 to 10 damage. That's nice. That adds to the base damage of the weapon, which is then going to be uh, enhanced, right? So that's always good. 192 to attack rating. Good for, once again, this is all for melee. Um, that's nice. 13 to mana. 13 to mana can be nice. I do care about mana in a lot of TBD is to be determined. Um... I do care a lot about mana and a lot on a lot of characters, but I don't want to waste my skill points on the energy, right? Um, so you have to think about what is it, uh, how many points do I get per stat point? Because not everything is equal. For example, if I'm a barbarian and I put one point in vitality, I gain four life. Four life. If I'm an assassin, I gain three life. If I'm a druid, I think I get two life, maybe like 2.5, something like that. Um, per point that's in there. So it's very, very big that you know what it is. Because a barbarian as well, one point of energy equals one mana. That's horrible, right? So like never, it's like almost never worth it to waste points and energy on a barbarian because you're getting one mana per energy point. Um, whereas a sor sorceress, I'm pretty sure it's reversed. I think you get four mana, three or four um, per one point. So it's worth a lot more as a sorceress to dump into energy to get more of that mana um, than it is a barbarian. So for things like a barbarian, something like 13 to mana is actually really huge if you need mana because that gives you 13 energy like points that you would have wasted in energy. Source gets two mana per energy? Okay, two. Regardless, it's better than one. Are you sure it's only two? Source gets three. I'm pretty sure it's three. I think most other characters get two. I think Source gets three. But, um, so 13 to mana on a Barbarian, actually really nice if you're having mana issues, right? Because you're like, hmm, I could either spend 13 points in energy for 13 mana, or I could spend 13 points in vitality for, what is that, 52 life? So you're sacrificing 52, this is worth 52 life right here, if you needed the mana that badly, right? So obviously when you get like end game, your characters don't care about mana at all. But when you're on the way and everything like that, it's very good, right? Very good to note. Uh, similar idea, we got our rune bar with our scythe. Uh, so good enhanced damage, plus to max damage, plus to attack rating, all useful skills. Overall though, normal attack speed 
A big thing, right, is your attack speed. These are both normal attack speed, and that's something that can kind of be iffy, right? A lot of times in Diablo 2, you want to have faster attack speeds, very fast attack speed, whatever it is. Um, so that stuff can kind of be a little iffy. Slow attack speed on a crossbow, meh, right? So I'm kind of trashing these items on any character just about. This isn't bad because the damage is so high on this X, but it's not amazing. Enhanced damage attack rating, plus to cold damage, huge. 18 to 51 damage, really huge. And you'll note that any of that elemental damage isn't going to be added into the two-handed damage up top, right? This is going to be tacked on cold damage at the end, um, which is really nice. And also lifesteal per hit. That lifesteal per hit will be on your physical damage, so do note that. So if you have a bunch of added poison damage or something like that, that's not going to be a part of your lifesteal. Only your physical damage that you're dealing um, will be a part of the lifesteal. So that's where, you know, something like a Wind Force is a lot better um, because it has really high damage and that lifesteal, so you actually get some life stolen from it. But, uh, yeah, so the plus to cold damage is huge. I love to have one charm in my inventory, like a small charm that's like one to two cold damage. Anything like that, hold on, Tyrael. Anything like that is absolutely amazing to have because that's going to give you um, the just that cold damage added on. All you want is the ability to hit them and then become cold, right? Chilled. That's all you really want because that's amazing. Because then there's half, you know, they're so slow trying to attack you, move around, does a ton for you. Um, awesome staff right there, plus two to source skills. No fast cast rate on it, which really sucks. Also, it's a staff and it's required level 43. You know, that kind of is tough, right? The level requirements on the staff really make it suck. Um, but that's unfortunate. That's just what plus two source skills is kind of going to get you. Uh, cold damage, who cares? Lifesteal, who cares? Not going to apply to a sorceress at all. One to Nova could be nice if you're running Nova. Fire res is really nice. Damage to undead, who cares at all, right? That's physical damage as well. Um, but plus two source skills, always very good, right? On a sorceress, you care about plus skills a lot. And our Falcon Mask, Fire Res 28%. Eh, it's not bad, right? Fire Res is always good. You can get 30 Fire Res just from having a Ral, um, though. So, you know, unless you, like, went and socketed this just to put stuff in it so you could add that. I mean, that could be something that you do, right? If you go... I guess we don't have our socket quest. So that would be something like, let's say I really cared about that. Why don't I go to MF? Source items, discuss your would be nice for finding on a speed run. Um, so I've done that somewhat, Sveto. I've gone through all of the items that I have on my character. I've gone through all the items that I have on my character. Right, so you can add sockets. So, bam. All right, now I have two sockets on this Falcon Mask right here. So, I could have 28 Fire Res plus another Rao Rune plus another Rao Rune to get, you know, a ton of Fire Res or, or Dull, whatever it is, right? Um, so, sometimes finding items like this can be really nice because uh, then you can go get them socketed. Assuming you aren't using your socket quest for Ancient's Pledge or your socket quest for, um, you know, some other specific Rune Rune that you really want. That just tilted you, me wasting my socket quest on a random falcon mask. Sorry, bud. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So that's kind of uh, that kind of covers covers all of that. So that's that right there is my first inside the mind of a Diablo two master um, bit. Right? Maybe I'll do one for every character. Maybe that could be fun. Like, over time, do one for every character. Or I could take this character and go Nightmare with it, go Hell with it. Though I did just wait for my socket quest. That's yeah, fine. I could just buy a shield. Um, go Nightmare, go Hell, uh, and kind of keep expanding on it in a way to showcase what I'm thinking throughout the series. Throughout um, the time that I am running. That right there was a pretty good showcase of... Every single thing that I'm thinking of for the maps, for the items, for the gear, whatever it is, right? Um, so I, I think that's, I think that's possibly something that could be interesting. Let me guys know 
uh, you know, in comments below and, and whatever not. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed that. All right. I had to just give an ending for YouTube. Take Ryu to hell.